Oh, the FCS does it right, don't they? Get out of here with your bowl games. Give me a 24-team playoff. The bracket is set. First round begins this weekend. The top eight ranked teams getting buys into the round of 16. Here are the top eight seeds with unbeaten Sam Houston State on top as the one seed and the defending champs. Number two, North Dakota State, winners of eight of the last 10 FCS titles. Let's bring in Mr. FCS, Emory Hunt, and let's talk about a few first round games. It's 24 teams. After the first round, we whittle it down to 16 teams. Let's start with Florida A&M and South Lakes, Louisiana. That's going to be a fantastic game because it's going to be strength versus strength. You have Southeast Louisiana's offense, which can score 50 points a game if need be. They have the reigning Walter Payton Award uh, winner, which is the FCS equivalent to the Heisman Trophy and quarterback Cole Kelly, who looks like he may win back-to-back -back awards. He's been that good. He's 6'7", 260, one of the best pro prospects in this game. And on the flip side, you have a great defense in Florida A&M. They have three NFL prospects on that defensive side of football led by Marquise Bell, the safety who has already accepted his invitation to the East-West Shrine Bowl and also the Senior Bowl. So this is someone that's going to match up well with that offense that they're going to see against Southeast Louisiana. So I think it's going to be a fantastic game. Strength versus strength, something's got to give here. Florida A&M to win there. Don't have lines yet on these FCS games. We should get them uh, the night before the games on Saturday from Caesar Sportsbook. Uh, another first-round game that you're looking at and you're going to pick here, Stephen F. Austin, the F stands for frickin', against Incarnate Word. Emery, who do you like? You know, I, I love Incarnate Word here. Even though my dad is originally from Nacogdoches, Texas, which is where Stephen F. Austin is located, I have to roll with the Cardinals here. They have the best quarterback, I think, pound for pound in the FCS, and Cam Ward. He may be, to be completely honest, this generation's addition of Steve McNair with how well he's throwing the football. Last year, he won the Jerry Rice Award or in the spring, which is given to the top freshman quarterback or freshman player in the FCS, and he's been doing phenomenal this year. Stephen F. Austin won five straight games to get into the playoffs. They knocked off Eastern Kentucky, and I think that win against the Colonels kind of knocked the Colonels out of the playoffs here. But you have to be able to score the ball consistently against Incarnate Word, uh, and I don't think Stephen F. Austin, although they have a solid offense, they don't have enough bullets in the gun to outgun the Cardinals here, so I do like Incarnate Word to move on to the second round. All right, and how about last year's runner-up, South Dakota State, having to play in this first round. They're not a top-eight team hosting UC Davis. Yeah, that's the thing. UC Davis' defense is, is really good, and they love to run the football, so they're going to try to shrink this ball game. And on the other side, though, you look at South Dakota State, they're playing in this first round because they had a couple of slip-ups throughout the season. I think a part of that was due to the fact that they played a long spring season. They went deep into the playoffs, got to the championship game, lost to Sam Houston. I think we started to see those injuries take effect throughout the early parts of the season, but they still beat the breaks off Colorado State, and they still have a lot of offensive talent out there on the field. Pierre Strong may be the best running back in the FCS in terms of NFL prospect. You have the Yankee twins, Jaden and Jackson at wide receiver, and Chris Oladokun, a quarterback who transferred from Sanford and also transferred from South Florida. He's been exactly what they needed at that position. So this offense is hitting its stride going into the playoffs, and we know they have great defense. So I do like the Jackrabbits to get it together in this one against the Aggies and move on. All right, Emery, you're going to take us through the entire bracket here as we count down to the championship in FCS play. 2014 bracket. Uh, Emery has uh, whittled it down to 16 now. He explained uh, some of the picks that he's had. Now is where uh, the, the, the seeded teams begin playing in the second round of FCS. And let's start at the top. Take us through it with Sam Houston taking on Incarnate Word. It, normally it would be offense versus offense, but Sam Houston's defense has been the biggest story here all season. I like them to move on. Montana State has arguably the best defense in the big sky. They run the football. They take possessions away. I look for them to not have enough offense in this one. So I like them to, to move on because of their defense. Missouri State is a really good team, but I do like Montana State's defense to get the job done there. Villanova, see the team by week. They get to take on the very potent Holy Cross Crusaders. Outstanding job right there by Coach Bob Chesney. But I like Villanova to move on there. Their defense is one of the best in the FCS. Sacramento State has a tough task. They have the bye week, 
so they will get enough time to prepare for South Dakota State. But that Jackrabbit offense, all those players I just mentioned, are just too strong uh, for the Hornets. So you got one upset there, South Dakota State taking out a seeded team, number four, Sacramento State. Bottom of the bracket now, James Madison, number three, taking on Florida A&M. James Madison is quite as kept the FBS team here because they have so much talent, so much strength on both sides of the ball. I think that'll be too much. They're well rested. They'll take care of business against the Rattlers. This will be a rematch game between Montana and Eastern Washington. Eastern Washington was able to upset the Grizzlies earlier in the season because their quarterback on the game winning drive got knocked out the game. He's back. He's healthy. I like the Grizzlies to move on there. This is a running back's dream right here. East Tennessee State runs the heck out of the football. Quay Holmes is outstanding. Kennesaw State runs the triple option. It's also a broadcaster's dream. That game may be an hour and 45 minutes. I like East Tennessee State to roll. And North Dakota State, it may not look like last year. It may not look like years previous, but they still are North Dakota State. Look for them to take care of business against the very lucky Southern Illinois Salukis. Okay, so seven of the top eight seeds advancing to the round of 16 in, uh, excuse me, the final eight in Emory Hunt's bracket. The only unseeded team getting to the final eight is South Dakota State. And Emory, you're going to take us through the rest of the way here and get us a champion. Of course, it was Sam Houston last season. North Dakota State has won eight of the last ten, but some new blood in here with a chance to get things done. Take us through your final eight here. Now, this is going to be fun. We got a rematch of last year's championship game um, coming up. I like Sam Houston to move on here, taking care of business against Montana State. Sam Houston State's defense is excellent. I keep stressing that. South Dakota State, more than enough offense. I think Villanova has been getting by mainly on defense and special teams. Look for the Jackrabbits to move on there. And up in the Northeast, you have James Mad Madison taking on Montana. The Dukes are strong on both sides of the football. They can run the football and they can take the ball away. I like the Dukes there. In North Dakota State, as long as they're out there in the playoffs, it's hard to win in Fargo. I've been in that place. It only holds maybe 10,000, but it sounds like it's 80,000 in that dome. I like the Bison to move on there as well. So Sam Houston and South Dakota State in one semifinal. James Madison, North Dakota State in the other. Emory has Sam Houston facing James Madison. Who's your champ? Sam Houston. I don't know what a loss looks like for Sam Houston. The last time they lost was in December of 2019 or November of 2019. 21 straight games they've won. And what a great way to get out of the FCS by winning the whole thing once again and moving on to Conference USA. So I see the, the Bearcats because of how well they've maintained their roster. No one left after the spring normally fbs teams was picking away top talent that played in the spring that didn't happen at sam houston they still have jaquez ezard they still have isaac schley at tight end they still have eric schmidt at quarterback and ramon jefferson at running back and zion mccollum an nfl prospect at corner so their core players are intact and i think that'll be the reason why they win back to back FCS titles and move out of the FCS into Conference USA next season. And that would be back-to-back -back years. North Dakota State doesn't win it, which is uh, something wild that we haven't seen in over a decade. Emory, you had Sam Houston beating James Madison. Uh, as you know, both those teams are going to be moving up to FBS play soon. Um, you're, you're both an FCS guy and a group of five guys. So, I mean, you, you love these kind of schools, but what do you think, what's your takeaway, I guess, with some of these huge FCS powers deciding to go to FBS? I think it's inevitable, man. You, you talk to a lot of people around the FCS, and James Madison, which is a fairly new program, started in 1972, has been you know, preparing to move to the FBS for quite some time. So has Jacksonville State. Sam Houston plays a lot of guys within that uh, that group of five conference, you know, you see a lot of games against Sunbelt Conference teams and Conference USA teams, so they're right there in that footprint. I think it's good for college football, which then allows more teams, let's say from Division II, to move up. We're going to see Texas A&M Commerce move up into the Southland next year, so I think it's great for for uh, college football. And I wouldn't surprise to I wouldn't be surprised to see more FCS teams make the jump to FBS within the next three to four years. I wish FBS was more like FCS. I mean, can you imagine a 24-team playoff in the FBS? I mean, the games would just mean so much more. We can do it, Emory. We can. We can. It makes so much sense. And that's the thing that we've seen since 
the entire creation of the FCS, which started back in 1978 with Florida A&M winning the first national title. It could be done. You trim off some of those games at the FBS level, get it to about 10 to 11 games max, and then you could have your 2014 playoff. It's fun to watch. It makes for every game mattering. And we talked about this before. A lot of teams that felt as though they should have been in the playoffs, Eastern Kentucky, Mammoth, they missed out because they just didn't have enough wins. They had seven, and they get pushed out by teams that had eight, maybe seven and five. So it, it makes for the competitive spirit at the at the uh, FCS level for every game. It, it just matters more to use that slogan. It just definitely means more at the FCS level because mm -hmm. you really have to win the majority of your games. And I just love having playoff games on, on campuses around the country. That's great stuff. I, I just don't know if we're going to see it because the Bulls have so much power in, in FBS play, the Rose Bowl specifically kind of holding things back. So uh, fingers crossed that we'll get an expanded playoff in FBS at some point. But do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.